Hello, ACL here. In this video, we're going to be talking about some features of Cheat Engine, but more importantly, we're going to be talking about unknown value scans. And we use these when we're looking for things that we don't know the exact value of. And a good example of this would be position, uh, health bars, because health bars have an underlying value, however, it's not being displayed directly to the user. And so we have to employ other methods in order to find this information. And the game we're going to be looking at first here is Dink Smallwood because they use a health bar to represent your life. And I actually have it had it displayed here, but uh, first what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to enable a no-clip hack to allow me to walk through some walls here and get into the action a little faster. But this is actually not too different than exact value scanning except our initial list, if you go back to the analogy from before of the man who got sick, uh, our list isn't just going to be what we ate the day before. Let's say the man had amnesia and he forgot what he ate before. It'll be everything in his house. So everything in memory is suspect because we have no clue where it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do unknown initial value. And we're going to scan. We got 15 million matches. So let's, let's go get hit. I go get hit by an enemy and I took one point of damage. So if I go in I'm going to look for things on my list that have changed accordingly, and I can do this by going to this drop-down menu and hitting decreased value by dot dot dot, and we just put in one, and we do a next scan, and we've filtered it down to 6,000 potential things in our list, so now we have a list of 6,000 things, and we're just going to want to do the same thing again, go in, get hit, I took one point of damage, do a next scan, decrease value by one. Five things in our list now. So, so far, so good. I got hit again. I actually got hit twice there. Uh, so what I can actually do is, if you're not sure how much damage you took, you can actually go into just regular decreased value. Decreased by an unknown amount. And I could do that. So I've actually narrowed it down to two things. And uh, sometimes you can't get it down to one thing. Sometimes you just can't filter it down enough because one of these could be a display value, one of them could be the actual value. You just have to try them. So I'm going to add the first one to the list. I'm going to change it to 10. And you see the bar filled up to full. So this had to have been health. And the other one actually changed accordingly, so the second one might be some sort of display value. So anyhow, we managed to find it. You might have noticed the color of these are green, but if we looked for other things, if we just did a search for some random numbers here, uh, some are green, some are, some are black, and what this means is the green ones are static, meaning if I were to restart Dink Smallwood, then reattach Cheat Engine to the new new instance of the game, this address would still work because it was green. It was static. Static means unchanging. Uh, if you've ever heard of the phrase static versus dynamic IP addresses, a static IP address, when you reset your router, will be exactly the same, whereas with a dynamic IP address, when you restart your router, you'll get a new IP, and this is how you can get around IP bands if you have a dynamic IP address. Similar concept here, you have static addresses that don't change, so when you restart the game, this is still valid. And dynamic, or just regular, addresses that when you restart the game will no longer point to the same information. So if this had been a regular address, not static, when we, when we restart the game, it, there's a very high chance that it would just point to some garbage information now. Okay, I think... Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so one more, one more small thing. Uh, Cheat Engine has some interesting built-in features, such as the speed hack, and so it's worth looking at these. Uh, they're not super useful, but they can be useful. You can go in and set this to some number, like 5, and it'll speed up the flow of the game for everything, so this includes NPCs, and so on. It's worth also noting that my noclip hack, there, there seems to be a small flaw with it, and 
I haven't gotten to looking at what it is, and it causes my game to crash frequently once it's disabled. So it's probably in the disable section of this hack. Maybe I'll fix it eventually, maybe not. It's no big deal. We were done with that game anyhow. Next game we're going to look at for some of the features of Cheat Engine is uh, Minesweeper. So let's attach... This is actually the Windows XP Minesweeper. And we're going to be looking at the unrandomizer here. And I'm actually going to change the unrandomizer back to... Oh, it is at the default settings. Great. And what happens is when we enable it with the default settings and try to start a new game, the Minesweeper should... Oh, this is in the default settings. Something ain't right. Let's try that again. There we go. Now it's locking up. This is what happens with the default settings. So what an unrandomizer does should be pretty intuitive. It tries to unrandomize random things. And this can be useful for games with any sort of gambling system or anything with random values. It could be something as simple as monsters walking left or right. Sometimes they you'll see like a in a 2D platformer, monster will stop and it'll randomly pick left or right, walk that way, but if you turn on the unrandomizer you can make it so it's always walking say left or, or something of that sort. And there's other things that you can do uh, if you have damage in a game if there's a damage range you can hit them from 100 to 150 with careful mess tinkering with the uh, return values you can get it so you always hit 150 and it's worth noting that they, they give you an ominous message when you try and turn on the un unrandomizer saying like hey this can crash your game and that's not to be taken lightly as you just saw it crashed Minesweeper and Minesweeper is not even particularly complex but we're gonna wanna go in and mess with the incremental value uh, we're just gonna wanna check that and that actually is sufficient to make Minesweeper happy so if we start a new game let's try this something ain't right Something ain't right. Oops. Whew. Everything's going wrong today. Continue. Yep. Maybe I hit no last time. That's probably what it was. This is peculiar. Oh, maybe I didn't attach it to the new one. Rookie mistake there. Yeah, make sure you attach it to the new one. Enable. And... Wow. There we go. Something was going wrong. Something was going wrong, but we managed to fix it, so... As you can see, it's very not random. You get vertical lines through here. Incrementally random. It's, uh... One of the useful features in Sheet Engine. One of the most useful for the built-in. Speed hack's pretty useful, too. Um... Other things worth noting is most of this information can be left alone. The only time you would uncheck this is if you uh if you're hacking maybe an emulated game and you can't find your your address. Usually this is fine because most games will align information on by 4 bytes. Uh, pausing the game while scanning is useful if you're trying to find something that's changing. For example, the time in Minesweeper changes, and while you're scanning, you don't want the time to be increasing, so you can pause the game and time it so that if I'm searching for time, let's do 12 seconds, exact value scan, it'll actually temporarily pause the game. The scan was actually so fast because this game is so small that you couldn't notice the pausing, but it paused the game during that whole scan process. Uh, I think that's everything in terms of built-in cheat engine features and in terms of unknown value scanning. We can get into some more complicated issues later, but uh, thank you for watching and farewell.